William Flusser quoted, The term communication can be defined in a wide sense and in a strict sense. The wide sense is a process by which a system is changed by another system. What Flusser I think is trying to say is that communication flows in distribution channels. For example, texts or images are published on the platform of books, audio and video content broadcasted on radio stations and TV, codes and data become transformed into the online world and the creation of the internet. But today, communication systems are much more complex than that. People are constantly looking for more creative and innovative ways to communicate in a simple and easy manner. By drawing on what we've already invented, we've established some of the most valuable and binding communication systems of the 21st century. We have the ebook, which is literally an electronic book in which users can download and read potentially a thousand different books of any particular language, carry it around easily in a backpack, or store it anywhere, being incredibly lightweight and small. There's also the trendy MP3 player, or the iPod, replacing the CD player as the 21st century's portable music player device. Simple in appearance and easy to use, with music playback of any soundtrack or song that can be easily downloaded from iTunes. And the most revolutionary impact on communication has to be the creation of the internet, featuring real-time interaction with interactive video and voice calls and instant messaging, personal archives created with social networking sites and stored electronic mail, and of course, the rest of the World Wide Web, with its discussion forums, blogs, online shopping sites, etc. I guess the manner in which platforms distribute these forms of communication simply circulates from previous knowledge and ideas that people think to advance on. However, how these systems become composed and how they emerge and come into being, become constructed, maintained and how they compete with other systems stems from the actor network theory and assemblage theory. Manuel de Lanza, the philosopher that coined this theory, described it as a flat ontology where both human and non-human agents engage equally in alliance and telechi, enabling a virtue shaped by their relations with one another. But simply breaking down this big worded quote, he's just trying to say how non-humans, which can be a technological device, a network, a theory, their agency along with the help of humans help recreate and actualize these instruments of the past, present and future. Sociologist Bruno Latour also described the technological instruments as constructed through smaller constructions with a word called assemblages, which are basically what enables the thing to work. So if we think about technology and how things are formed, a change in any part of it can construct something entirely different or new, offering a variety of possibilities available. Take for example the classic iPod, deconstructed, and there's a compact battery like many other 21st century devices. These parts, producing and storing sound and memory, applicable to the same parts in built-in radios. The play, pause, stop, fast-forward and rewind buttons were taken from the old tape recorders and stereos, and these tiny earphones simply a more convenient form of the chunky headphones people had that would wrap around their heads. The iPod is essentially composed of these smaller assemblages of the past, and in theory the iPod is just an advanced assemblage of the good old CD player, just some more convenient and smaller. Why new systems are being brought into contact? Distribution is constantly changing in distributing news, information and entertainment. Pre-1900, the printing press was the only way to circulate news, and then there was the telegraph, to the radio, to TV, and now more commonly online news websites, and blogs and the social networking site Twitter, with more than 200 million users worldwide sharing their own individual kinds of messages to the world. The way in which audiences can access this information has thus transformed completely. From a time where smoke signals used by the American Indians were the only way individuals could communicate to each other, to today where the current milieu is born predisposed to social media. Sociologist Paul Edwards said, quote, We shall not cease from exploration and the end of all our exploring. Enforcing the human desire to move towards more networked and advanced media and changing how traditional media engage with the public. Aggregation of information no longer must be achieved through the word of mouth, but many sites such as Tumblr that allow users to read blogs, shares previously distributed information. Flusser also said, quote, Our thoughts, feelings, desires and actions are being robotized, the collapse of a settled way of life. In the age of media convergence, it is not uncommon for someone to not own a smartphone or laptop that has access to the internet. These seemingly small but great changes in systems of communication will forever continue to change, accommodating the desires of the public and changing the future of our technological world.